What's up guys, it's Doodoo -doo Poker for Drive HUD. This is my first video, so please bear with me if I butcher uh, every aspect. Alright, I want to talk about a very common spot in poker, 6 max, no limit hold'em. Button versus small blind 3 bet, button defend. These hands happen a decent amount of the time, and we should know how to play optimally and exploitatively versus them. So, in this hand, I'm going to hide villain's hole cards, and we are going to see what happens. Here we go. So, villain opens 3.4x BB. This is 2 cent, 5 cent on... Uh, True Poker, which is the Winning Poker Network. Um, we're gonna. This is pretty standard three bet. We're gonna make it around four x. Um, so I made it sixty nine. Four x would have been sixty eight. Standard so far. And villain calls. Okay. Take a flop. Nine of hearts. Five of spades, three of spades, and we have an ace of spades, queen of clubs in our hand. All right, so this kind of looks like, uh, you know, it's like you're not really thinking about your hand. You're just probably going to bet here because you have a spade, blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to talk about um, strategies from here. So... First things first, think about all the hands you can have. You can have aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens. All right, so we should be betting all our tens and jacks and queens. And aces and kings can be mixed. Um, if you have a spade in your hand, you want to be more likely to bet than if you don't have a spade. If you have a heart in your hand, you want to be more likely to bet. That's because we can bluff some backdoor flush draws. Um, but the first thing I look at, I put this through a solver, um, so here we go. Well, for every hand like this, I get my little notepad out, and I do some fun stuff. <laughs> so, for instructional purposes, I try to simplify the action. So, instead of saying that the button opens up 3.4x, because that's, like, really messy... I just simplify it to 3x. And then for me, I'm not going to put, you know, I uh, I 3 bet to, what did I 3 bet to? Uh, 69 cents. So that's uh, 14, 13.8 BBs. I'm not going to put 13.8 BBs because I want to simplify it. So I make it nice and clean. We'll say button opens 3, SB 3 bets to 12, button calls. I put the rake in. Um, I did up to $3. I think it's actually like $2 here, but uh, it shouldn't really matter too much. Um, and then I run the ranges. So range one is always out of position. This is what I put for the small blind three bet. We are three betting aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, <coughs> sevens, sixes. You can kind of tweak these a little bit, but these are my... 100% three bets, and then I have like fives and fours is 50. And then I have the strong suited aces, the four and the five as 100, and then I have the little weak ones as 50. You could probably drop the ace two, ace three out entirely because um, they're not that great out of position. And you don't really want a two or a three in your hand, so I could probably modify that a little bit. We have the strong offsuit ace x, king x. Um, Queen Jack and King Jack are a little loose. Those might be able to be like 50% or even dropped out entirely. Ace 10 off. Uh, I have a 50. The strong suited Broadways are all a hundo, as well as the strong suited connectors. And then I have the weaker ones at 50. And then like a King 9, Queen 9, Jack 9 at 50. All right. So I ran four sizings. I usually run, <laughs> I kind of go overkill on this. In single race pots, I do like 11 sizings because I want to see if uh, overbetting is like super high or EV. But 
when the stack to pot ratio is like between three and four, you really only need to run four sizings. So the first sizing I ran was 33%. The overall EV was 10.74, 13.6 for betting, 8.1 for tracking at a 48.1% frequency. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna notice here, 33%, that is one third C bet. That is the highest frequency bet because it's the lowest sizing. So the lower your um, bet size is, the higher frequency you can um, bet because uh, you have a wider range. So immediately we know that this is not a range C bet. Not a range C bet, 48.1%. So that's the first thing when we're looking at this. When I go through the thought process, I'm like, okay, is this a range C bet? No, not a range C bet. Okay. So is it a range check? Nope, not a range check. Okay. So now we go to 50% sizing. And we see it's actually higher EV, 10.86 EV at 44.4% frequency. So when the bet sizing goes up, the frequency goes down. Then I did 75%, 10.92, 33.7% frequency. Then I did 100, 10.85. Okay, so <coughs> we know 75% C-bet sizing is the highest EV sizing. So then I look at where my hand is in the solver range. Ace of Spades, Queen of Clubs. I actually did. I've actually misplayed this hand because I've uh, I've never studied um, nine five three boards uh, in depth. So I did know enough to check the flop. So I was kind of proud of myself. But uh, we'll show you what happens in the hand. Anyways, let's go. I had Ace of Spades, Queen of Clubs, right? Okay. So it's betting. 29% of the time at 75% CBET sizing, which is highest EV. It's checking 71% of the time, which is interesting. <clears throat> so as you see here, like the, uh, the non spades are always checking. So that's something to note. And then we can go to like ace king. I mean, ace king, the non spades are mostly checking. Yeah. I mean, 3% that's, that's a range check. So any non-spade in your hand with overcards is a check. So that's that's the first thing to note, okay? So I write down ace of spades, queen x, should mostly check. <clears throat> and then I'll put, um, you can do it like this. Ace of spades, king x. Actually, we'll do it like this. Non-spade high cards should mostly check flop boom so now in this hand we'll see what happened i ended up checking and pie wits whatever that means bet 75 percent c bet sizing which is actually it was actually 74.8 percent but it, it actually works out perfect because the default sizing for this is 75%. So we check. He ends up betting. 75% sizing. Now here is where it gets a little tricky. So he bet. So I have two options. Check call. Check fold. Check raise. Three options, rather. Um, I ended up misapplying a concept here, which is really kind of advanced but i ended up shipping here and um that was not the correct play but before we go into that we check which we should be doing at a high frequency he bets and now it's on us let's see what the solver does with ace of spades queen of clubs well we know we check 71 percent of the time so it's always a check call, always. Not a fold, not a raise, call. That was my first mistake. But now let's look at how the different frequencies change um, based upon what spade you have. 
So let's look at this. The Ace of Spades is always a check call, right? If you have Ace of Spades, King X, Ace of Spades, well, let's look at this one. I'm assuming. Uh, Ace of Spades, King X. Um, it's more, yeah, it's mostly a call. So since we're not robots, we can just call with the Ace of Spades, King X always. And then Ace of Spades, Queen X. But now this is really interesting to me. Now look at Ace X, Queen of Spades. What does it do? Now it's check raising 29% and calling like 28%. Why is that? Well, this is really, it gets really cool. We want our opponent to have flush draws because we're ahead of flush draws. <clears throat> we want our opponent to have ace of spades, uh, X of spades in his hand. Ideally, you know, he has nothing, but I'm saying we don't want to block his ace high flush draws. So we check call when we have the ace of spades, but we check raise when we have the queen of spades. Unblocking his ace x of spades and also blocking his flush draw because we have a spade. So we, we net like 4% right there. So I would split up the range like this. We're going to check call with all of our ace of spades, king x, all of our ace of spades, queen x, and all of our ace of spades, jack x. But we're going to check raise with all of our ace x, king of spades, ace x, queen of spades, because we don't want the ace of spades in our hand. So, I thought that was really cool. Now, if you look at the EV, it doesn't even matter, like, that much. The check calling is 1.53 EV, and the check raise is 1.52. But I think it's just a cool way to uh, split your range. So let's go back to the actual hand of what happened. Uh, I incorrectly shipped here. And I got snapped off. And the run out was five of hearts, nine of spades, and ace, nine suits scooped. So what I should have done is I should have split my range into the ace x queen of spades with the ship. Ace spades queen of clubs should have just been a call. So let's just see. I, I, if I just would have called, then the turn would have been a five of hearts, and I would have checked folded, because I would have checked, and then he would have bet, and I would have folded. So I would have saved myself a lot of money there. Well, live and you learn, I guess, on that one. But this is just like a kind of a basic hand. But... It just shows like how deep you can go down the rabbit hole in poker. Because I think most people here would literally, literally just, they would say, okay, I three bet my ace queen, you know, I'm going to call and then I'm just going to see bet and then whatever he does. And then the turn, you don't really know what to do. But like when, when thinking about a hand, first thing you want to do is, is this a range C bet? So we look here, nope, this is not a range C bet. This is a 33.7%, or we bet around one third of the time, check around two thirds of the time. So that's the first thing, range C bet, no. Range check, no. Um, hand, uh, boards that would be range checks would be uh, all monotone boards. For simplicity's sake, you can range check all monotone boards. Um, just to simplify your strategy. So here, not a range uh, C bet. So we check, then he bets, then how do we react? We split our range up into ace of spades, queen x, call. Ace x, queen of spades, check raise, because we want him to have the ace of spades. Um, and another thing to note is specifically the nine, the nine makes it not a um, range C bet. I want to see something here. So if that nine was a 10, I think... I, mean, I haven't even done this yet, but I think ace queen would be a bet because of how the uh, bill tree, because of how the 10 interacts with the ace and the queen. Now there's a bunch of good turn cards for you. Any jack, any king. Um, that's eight outs right there on the turn that you don't have with the with the nine. So with the nine, I mean, what, if you have ace queen, what are you hoping for? You know what I mean? Um. 
So we're going to just run this real quick, and I want to see if the 10 is the difference maker. Here we go. 50%. Nope. Wrong again. God, poker's hard. All right. Uh, <laughs> apparently, it's not a difference maker. Um, although, it does go up in, in frequency a little bit. Because before, it was like 29%, and now it's like 45, 46. So, it does matter a little bit. But this is still not a range C bet. Interesting. All right. Well, hopefully, my first video went okay and this is supposed to be a short video just to look at one hand but uh this is doo-doo poker for drive hud and i will see you guys shortly good luck at the tables